All right, here we go. Let's do this. My name is Tammy Barton, and I am with Illuminating the Soul up in the Northland in Kansas City. And I've been in business uh, doing, I'm a licensed massage therapist and specialize in craniosacral therapy, uh, shamanistic healing, such as soul retrieval, and uh, been specializing in that for about 10 to 15 years now. Been a massage therapist for 15. So I absolutely love what I do. I love sharing what I do. And I'm so grateful that you are here with me today. So I'm going to be talking to you a little like the world of shamanism. And many people think of shamanism as potentially this aboriginal medicine man and this tribe that's completely dressed up and um, face paint, feathers, and essentially doing medicine man work with the village, with the individual people and healing. And since we are living in a culture and a society that we're not an aboriginal tribe, we're essentially uh, modern day folks navigating through um, all life's changes and um, those aspects as far as um, just daily life. And we've had so many changes happening lately to where it's like our central nervous systems have not had the opportunity to kind of calm down, re-regulate and uh, really kind of reground and refocus. So part of my workshop today that I want to share with you is talking about the different facets of shamanism, the elements, the directions, and most importantly, self-care tips and how you can integrate these shamanistic perspectives and healing practices into your daily life, like beginning today, which is awesome. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the history and then go into detail a little bit about the four directions and the four elements. And, um, and then I want to make sure that we have time at the end for any questions that you want to, you would like to ask, and then I can make sure that I have that time specifically for you. And so as far as the history of shamanism, it is cross culturally based and in any point and aspect of the world. And so there are a lot of, uh, cross references with the different religions and spiritualities as far as prayer as far as um, connecting with the land, as far as our ancestors, the elements of earth, air, fire, and water, and as far as really asking for those insights and guidance direction in our own personal lives, but then communal wise, taking care of our community, taking care of our, our family, okay? And so within that divine right, it's our goal as individuals and healers and compassionate people to help as many people as we possibly can. And that's really one of the avenues of why I started getting into shamanism. I started more Native American wise, um, studying as far as the directions, and then actually did some uh, in-person workshops with Hank Wesselman, uh, weekly, actually full week um, indoctrinations in the Peruvian shaman and the actually Hawaiian shamanism with Hank. Wesselman, who was one of my mentors and teachers, and then did a year-long apprenticeship with the Peruvian, um, the Pachuquiti Mesa with Daniel Baxley, and then have also started studying Mayan shamanism. So they're all kind of similar, but yet very different depending on um, the Hawaiian-based practices that they brought in, the Peruvian-based practices that they brought in, and Mayan-based practices that they brought in. But many aspects that are the same within shamanism is essentially, um, once again, helping the community, helping family, and most importantly, finding your own divine right and divine self and healing, and then being able to integrate that out into the community. And so within that, I'm gonna kind of share a little bit as far as ways that you can integrate uh, into your daily practices. And one is actually creating a mesa or an altar space. And that with, you can have just a regular cloth, a handkerchief, uh, or you can purchase like a sacred cloth on um, different shamanistic websites, but something simple, just get a handkerchief, lay it out on your table, and then find uh, an earth element, because earth is all about feeling grounded, feeling safe, and knowing that you are embodied and nothing can shake and move you, okay? So one of the pieces that I've found is a little heart-shaped rock 
Um, and then I also have another rock that I found that says believe because uh, I'm very optimistic and I have a belief system that even with everything that we're going on and going through right now, we're going to make it through. And if anything, we're going to come out so much bigger and better. So I have two heart shape. I have a heart shaped rock and one that says believe, but essentially any, if you go out walking in nature and something speaks to you, that's part of the land, pick it up and then, you know, have an offering as far as gratitude saying, thank you, put it in your pocket. And then you can create a little mesa or altar space. And so essentially uh, within the Pachacuti Mesa, the Peruvian and creating an altar space, the earth element is actually in the south or right directly in front of you. Okay. And I will post pictures of a mesa that I have already set up once the uh, workshop is done to give you an idea an overview of being able to kind of create your own mesa and altar space. So the earth elements in the south and it's all about grounding full body presence being in the here and the now okay so as we then shift to the west that is essentially the fire element okay and i have two candles that i like working with one let's see if it'll show up here on the video it's cleansing and purifying the other is healing Okay, and I actually have these as a part of my retail store as well, but uh, you can, any candle will do. If you have one that you've already lit that's around your house, uh, bring in the fire element. And the fire element is actually as far as working with like the intellect, okay, the mental mind. So really, what are you thinking? Are you caught up in the fear? Are you caught up wondering as far as how am I going to make it through these times? situations and those aspects or are you in gratitude for what you do have the family connections that you have the financial aspects and all those as far as really being in gratitude and um, the power of prayer and knowing that we can make it through this no matter what situations uh, that you're going through and so give yourself that opportunity to uh, integrate earth talked about fire okay and you can light the candles you can do it every morning and say a simple blessing or a simple prayer we can't live without fire i mean if you go back even to as far as aboriginal tribes they had to have fire for warmth they had to have fire for light okay so really you're bringing the light in you're bringing the illumination aspect of of bringing light to the dark and if you think about everything that we've been kind of going through right now we need a lot of light so Light the candle every day. Say a prayer and gratitude and allow yourself to be fully present as far as what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Don't deny your feelings. So if you're in that fear, honor the fear. The goal is to just not stay there, okay? And, and knowing that we're all in this together, all right? So we're going to move to the north as far as our altar space and... That's gonna be as far as the air elements. And I have a couple, um, kind of one of my, couple of my sage fans here. And you can just even have a single feather. You don't have to have a full uh, entourage that I have here, but these are just two of my favorites. One's fairly simple. I got this at a Native American market and has three different uh, feathers in it. And then this one here is kind of unique. I got this down at Aquarius Bookstore uh, it has a crystal coal at the end, uh, wood, and then it has some bells, which have a clearing nature to them as well. And then uh, turkey feathers. And you can use as far as the air elements, as far as clearing the space, connecting in with your ancestors and loved ones and guides and angels, and really calling forth as far as guidance and direction. And if you think about, I was raised Southern Baptist, and so that's one of my foundational pieces. So I truly believe in the power of prayer and um, calling on the higher powers to be to kind of help not only myself but my friends and my family and my community and it's the air element in the north is definitely for that and so but i also work with a lot of sage and kind of clearing the space clearing myself i'm human i have my own issues and my tissues and stuff that i work through and the clients that i work with uh integrate a lot of sage and uh, the air element of allowing the cleansing to kind of go up and up and through my home space and uh, right now you're in my healing space 
So I cleanse and clear it every day to keep the, the clean, clear energy. So that's the air element. And then we're gonna kind of transcend into the water element and that's all about our emotions. So it's taking the fire element as far as like, what are we thinking? And really grounding them into what, I'm, what am I feeling? And that a lot of times is one of our best navigational systems as far as, no, really, how do you feel, okay? And honoring those feelings. So the water elements, um, I have a conch shell. I actually got this in, in Mexico. And you can have even just a small shell that represents the, the water element in your mesa. A lot of times I'll collect and gather some sand at different beaches that I've been to. You can go out in the backyard, dig up a little dirt, and put it in a little bowl that can be a part of your earth element or your your water element and then just dabble a little um, water on there to kind of transcend as far as having that beautiful blend of both so the water element is essentially all about as far as supporting your emotional needs and sometimes we can do that internally but other times we need help from our community your closest friends so don't be afraid uh, to ask for help as far as really um, finding your path, finding your groundedness, and really without earth, air, fire, and water, uh, they all tell a story. So there's times where we may be ungrounded. And so when that occurs, grab your stone, carry it in your pocket, uh, just hold on to it. That can be a grounding sense and grounding nature to make you feel like you're not so flighty or disconnected. Okay, when you feel like you need to kind of calm the mind, light your candle and focus on the flame. That'll bring your energies and everything kind of back in to where, once again, you don't feel so scattered. No differently than like burning some sage. The goal is to be able to kind of transcend and work through as far as each of these elements and you can do them one at a time or collectively as a whole. And within the Peruvian, Mesa, there's also a centerpiece which is called Quichi, and that is a representation really of who you are. And so, one of the things that I have is actually a clear quartz point, and that's what I will have as my center focal point. And I want to be as clear as I possibly can my mental, my emotional. And so, plus, there's also little rainbow aspects within the clear quartz point that I have that and knowing um, there's so much beauty out there and so much beauty within me as well that we can all kind of share and support one another. So once again, I'm gonna kind of go back over these. So bring an earth element in for grounding, a sense of security, of being home in your own birthright. That safety aspect is huge. Bring the fire element in. I have two different candles. I have one for cleansing and one for healing, but any candle will do, okay? And this essentially will help you focus your mind and your thoughts and emotion, your thoughts and emotions as well, honoring each one as they kind of come through, but also bringing the light into the dark, okay? You have the air element. I'm gonna go back through these so you guys remember. As far as really connecting in and working with your guides and your angels, uh, your loved ones, such as any ancestors that have transcended over on the other side, they kind of, you know, they've, they've been through a lot, plus they know you. And just ask for that extra comfort and, and guidance. And then the water element, like I said, you can have a bowl of water, a bowl of sand, uh, anything that will help you focus on really balancing your emotional state, okay? And then once again, that focal point so that you can truly feel fully embodied is a Quiji piece, the centerpiece. And you can have anything, anything that you absolutely love, an object, it can be a painting, okay? Uh, any sacred object. For me, I choose the clear quartz piece that's got the rainbow aspects in it. It's just because I like all the colors and painting and all that good stuff. So, these are very simple practices and you can integrate them, like I said, in creating up a mesa and altar space with just having a cloth representing the north, south, east and west, the different elements that makes you essentially will kind of make you feel like you're doing something. 
rather than being all in your head or feeling like things are out of control, okay? And then take time. It's a beautiful meditation space also that you're really creating for you specifically. And then if you want to share that with your friends and family, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to do that. But most importantly, it's about you and your sacred journey and ways of being able to connect with the four elements and the, and the four directions. And let me talk a little bit about the directions. And so it's one of those things, depending on, like I've studied the Peruvian, I've studied Hawaiian, I've studied Mayan. And what's interesting, when you think about the directions, it can be different for each facet or place in the world. Because if, depending on where you're living, the water element may not be in the west, it may be in the east. Okay? The earth element may not be in the south, it may be in the north. And different Lodic... Lakota traditions will teach you and one of the things that I found is what they'll say is essentially it's what's most important for you Okay, and what I share with you today is essentially the Peruvian Okay, but the Lakota tradition really brings in what's important to you So honor as far as where you feel like the placement of earth air fire and water should be and Maybe not necessarily have an altar space, but have it created in your home and your office space or your bedroom. And like I, I'll be honest with you, I have little maces kind of set up um, in and throughout my home, not only in my healing space, I have one in my bedroom that's very intimate to me because um, that's really one of my most intimate places to be. That's my resting place. So I have stones such as onyx and obsidian to kind of help me sleep and kind of ground to protect as well. Uh, but I also have nurturing stones like moonstone and carnelian and citrine uh, so that when I'm in my dream state, I get a very deep sleep. I feel very protected and nurtured. And so the other aspect, another type of mesa that I have is a healing mesa. And that has different uh, crystal grid aspects that are set up specifically for healing. And so I really have the seven chakra stones uh, and kind of, and I'll be talking about chakras later on this afternoon, so you can join me at five. I'll be talking about chakras, and so we'll transcend as far as that aspect a little bit later this afternoon. But my healing mesa is very, very powerful and it's very centrally focused. And so, with the different clients that I work with, I I will always ask, is it okay if I place your name or a picture um, on my healing mesa? And essentially that's creating a vortex of energy for specifically for healing. And so feel free to be able to do that too, especially if you have a loved one or if you yourself are going through a situation, whether it be a physical illness, mental, emotional, spiritual, uh, create a healing Mesa. It's one of the most powerful ones I would say that you can create. And you don't necessarily need to have uh, the earth, air, fire, water. I personally do just because I love working with the four elements. But I, I brought in a lot of clear, and I'll take a picture of that and I'll post it on my page just so that you guys can see that. And once the workshop is done, to kind of give you some overview and ideas uh, to kind of get you guys started as well. So within my healing mesa, I have clear quartz points. And like I said, it's very focalized. And then I do have a cent centerpiece that has a shell with some sage in it and then um, another clear quartz point and i work with this mesa every single day and different people's names or essences or pictures will kind of come and go depending on the nature of healing and level of healing so if someone is let's say has gone through kind of a cancer journey and they're done with any treatments that may be completed i will have had their either their name or their picture on my healing mesa kind of holding that space for their highest and greatest good and whatever outcomes need to be, but truly it's holding that healing energy for them. Right now I also have on my healing Mesa, as far as the state that our world is in right now with uh, the coronavirus and knowing that um, a lot of people are being impacted, we're all being impacted all the way down to the individual level, our lives. And we've had to change a lot of things. And so that kind of creates like a little bit of disharmony. So I have specific stones as far as working with harmony and unity. Once again, I bring in those seven chakra stones. And um, I also bring in, I have a lot of obsidian uh, as far as protection and kind of grounding the energy. 
I also have a large piece of citrine. And that's, once again, bringing the light, the illumination, knowing that we are worthy and we're going to be okay. We are okay. Another piece that I have is a large amethyst cluster that's bringing in the spiritual realm and knowing that God's got it. Truly, God has it. He's, he's orchestrating on our behalf of knowing that change is needed. We're okay. We're going to be okay. Um, we're just kind of going through, through some not so goodness happening right now. And so we're all, once again, we're all in it together. As, and so you can have, as far as your own, like I said, I have a mesa, small mesa set up in my bedroom. That's specifically for me. I have my healing mesa that is set up for the greater good. And it's not, it's less about me and more about you. And so one of the things I'm going to do is invite you to the where, if you feel like you would like for me to add your name uh, to my healing mesa, you can either private message me, text me, um, or add your name to the feed that's the live feed that's going on now and just say, please add me. And I will definitely add you. Or if you um, have a loved one, you can just go anonymous. Okay. Don't necessarily have to have a name. Some people will send me pictures of whether even pet therapy. Okay. Because I work with animals quite a bit too. So feel free to to um, let me know if you'd like to be added to my Healing Mesa specifically. I love to do that. It's one way that I absolutely love to give back and hold that space for you and your family, friends, and loved ones and the community as well. So get creative with this. Have fun with this. It's a wonderful way as far as connecting in with the shamanism aspect of things and kind of cultivating and creating your own inner shaman because I believe we all have that in us as far as honoring Mother Earth and uh, our community and loved ones. And so so I want to open this up. So I know several of you are watching right now. So feel free if you have questions. I'm watching you guys kind of pop in and out of the feed. And so and just shoot the questions my way. I'm going to pause a moment and let you guys begin typing what questions that you may have that you may individually be going through or just have a question about shamanism as a whole. Okay. So fire away when you're ready. Plus, I'm just glad you guys are with me today. I wish we were in person, but unfortunately, that's not the situation. So I do want to give a shout out while you may be typing in any questions that you may have to Sylvie and Gigi and to Elaine for putting together all of the um, just the PR and shifting hugely from like having in person to virtual and really creating this uh, wonderful community and making it happen. So, okay, so Nat, hey, how are you? Nat's saying, what are some other air element items do you recommend? Awesome, so some other air elements that you may bring in, sage is wonderful, because that's using the smoke element. The other aspect is having like a winged animal um, as far as a totem, so it may be an eagle. You can actually, if you have different animal totems, winged birds, that type of thing, that as far as that you keep seeing, like lately I've been seeing a lot of owls. So I may uh, find an owl on like a Google image that I like and um, print it out and have that be my air totem, okay? So I've also seen different people, different classes and workshops that I've personally taken on shamanism that um, will have like a little animal totem, whether that's in the, like a wooden piece or um, crystal or stone. But probably what's easiest is uh, print out like your favorite bird or if you need eagle medicine, um, raven medicine, just print out those pictures and have that be an air totem. Hopefully I answer that. So sage is awesome, an individual feather, a picture, um, or an actual totem for your air element, okay? So let me see as far as other questions here. Nat, I hope I answered your question. Okay. And Vilma's asking if I'm going to be offering more shamanic training in the future. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm planning on doing one in June and then one later in the fall. 
I do three different levels within my shamanic training, and it really kind of trans in a cross-cultural basis for uh, what I offer. And the, the biggest aspect is for you to kind of create and find your own medicine, shamanic medicine. And so within the first level, I teach you how to do shamanic journey work. And we do a lot of journey work. And I share as far as historical foundations, cross-cultural, I dive in a lot deeper. And uh, I always have a center mesa set up and you can bring items, sacred items to be able to be charged within um, our weekend workshops. And so the first level I teach you as far as the history, the foundational pieces, how to journey, how to connect with your guides, how to connect with your loved ones within the spirit realm and arena and power animals. So really that first level is you kind of developing and creating your own spiritual tribe, okay? And like I said, we do a lot of journey work. And level two, we are actually creating a mesa, okay? And we use cornmeal, we use tobacco, we use um, bay leaves, we use Florida water, and we actually have an altar or mesa cloth. And then I teach you how to charge specifically each of the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. We go a lot more into the directions and kind of how they all tell a story and it spirals in to the centerpiece of Quichi. We do journeys on each of the elements and directions for you to be able to kind of tap in with each of those and what each element, fire, earth, air, fire, water are bringing to you specifically, their unique medicine for you. And um, I talk a little bit as far as um, working more with your spiritual tribe that we worked with in level one and broadening that even more. I talk a little bit about healing aspects for you specifically, as well as your friends and family and community. And then in level three, it's all about kind of like the initiation of really engaging the shamanic aspect into your daily lives. And um, the last level three um, I taught, we actually created a prayer stick. And so we got really, really creative. We actually kind of worked with each of the four elements intimately so it was kind of we brought a lot of fun in with that as far as we actually ran through a sprinkler with water because that's another way as far as um working with the water elements and uh so it was just kind of fun so we did a prayer stick we did a medicine bag created a medicine bag as well so that you can carry that with you because a lot of times what shamans or shamanic practitioners will do uh, they will carry a medicine bag with them that have each of the elements and tiny little totems with them. So, and you don't have to take my shamanic like workshops in like first, second, and third. You can kind of take them. So you can engage this, I think it's in June or July. I'll post those specific dates as well. You can take them interchangeably. You can take them again, because usually I'm always studying and learning. I'll bring more information in. So, and I'll post as far as those times and dates when we get done as well. So thank you, Vilma. Um, okay, Carolyn, what are your thoughts on shamanic initiations? Uh, my guess would be, and Carolyn, please clarify, would be that the shana, sh a lot of shamanic initiations will be almost like a rite of passage, whether that be um, ayahuasca ceremony, I've I've not done ayahuasca or peyote, and that's essentially working with plant medicine, kind of going through as far as allowing the plant medicine to kind of essentially work through the mind and getting down to the deeper layers. And so if you feel that this is right for you, I would fully honor that within you, but also make sure you find someone that is truly rooted and grounded and safe and working with plant medicine. I've had another friend of mine work with a shaman. He actually had to dig his own grave and lay in it and be covered up and only be able to breathe through a straw, okay? And he was completely covered up and he had to stay like that overnight. So that was a part of a shamanic initiation. And in talking with him, he, I mean, it, it moved him in ways that had he not done that, um, he wouldn't have learned different le lessons and received different healings. And so one of the shamanic initiations that I engage in is actually doing tamas skulls or sweat lodges. That's another shamanic initiation. And I've worked with several different shamans down in Mexico 
uh, within the Temescal or the sweat lodge and it is absolutely amazing so um, if you feel led to do so just make sure that you are connecting in with someone that can truly hold that space and container for you to be vulnerable and have that sacred medicine working in through you and be fully present okay so thank you carolyn and if you have other questions or i didn't tap into exactly what you were asking me just add another comment at the bottom so thank you carolyn um, Darlis, you're asking, so your Healy Mesa is separate. How many Mesas can a person have? My Healy Mesa is separate because I have my foundational one of earth, air, fire, and water in the Queechi piece. I have one in my bedroom. Like I said, that's specifically for my nighttime. And then I have my Healy Mesa. That's specifically for community, individual clients, friends, family, pets, that type of thing. And so... I have many. I even have one outside uh, that's working with the tree medicine that I have, the plant medicine that I have, just really calling in the outside in. So I say get creative with the Darlis and what your soul is calling forward with different mesas that you may feel like you're gravitating to, get creative with it and spirit will really honor that. So hopefully Darlis, I answered uh, oh, Carolyn, thanks for responding to Nat with the chimes and bells. That's awesome, too. Yeah, I love this. You guys are helping one another out. Uh, Teresa, you asked, can you talk a little, about, a little bit about how you go into a trance? Um, trance is essentially an altered state. Um, the Most shamans will use the drum, okay? And it's generally four beats per second. And essentially that works with uh, different levels of the brain, like wave lengths of the brain, that will shift your mind more into an altered or relaxed state. Some will use music, some will use dance. And so if you go back aboriginally, if you think about it and you find, you can always find different YouTube videos that talk about shamanic trance. Uh, the breath work is another one, but uh, aboriginal tribes, a lot of times they'll have the fire in the center and drum beaters, and then the dancers, getting into that altered state. When I studied with Hank Wesselman with the Hawaiian shamanism, one of the things that he brought in, because he's an anthropologist by trade, and so he would go into these different um, uh, Aboriginal tribal communities, and he was gifted from one of the medicine men, a leather band that went around his head, and they had cut leather strips that was still attached to the band, that actually was in front of his face, okay? That would shift his direct focal into more of a trance state. So he would kind of move back and forth. And he actually did um, healing on us uh, with those that were part of the workshop. And um, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny, but I can actually do that with my hair as well as pull it forward. I've kind of practiced and played with that a little bit because I don't have a leather band that had the leather strips. But that's one facet that um, this particular community that Hank worked with uh, gifted him is with the leather band and the leather kind of falling down in front of the face as far as working with the trance and getting into an altered state so that um, you get out of your mind and into your heart. Okay. So hopefully, Teresa, I answered that. Uh, let's see here. Siri, I think that's how um, you say your name. I'm trying to click on more. What I'm seeing so far is as a shaman from past lives and current. So I'm currently picking up on, picking up and more understanding. And I can't see the more comment, but I, all I see is how do you and how can one, and that's all I'm seeing for whatever reason, it's not letting me kind of see the rest of your post. So if you can just specifically ask that question, how do you and how can one, um, and a comment a little bit further down below. Okay, uh, Jerry, would incense be a good air or would that be fire? That's a great point because you're integrating both, okay? And one of the things that I teach and I'll share with you guys, if you really want to integrate all four elements, here's a beautiful way for you to be able to do that in one saging aspect. So you can get it like an abalone shell or a shell that's large enough Get some sand or you can even like like i said go outside and get some soil and place in the bottom of the shell so the what the shell is your water element 
the sand or dirt as your earth element, okay? And then you can have either just regular sage or sage cones, and you can light that, that's your fire element, and then the smoke will be your air element. So you're really integrating all four within one saging ceremonial practice uh, of saging yourself, your belongings, um, your environment, your home business, uh, your business at work, um, and integrating all four. So Jerry, that is an awesome question to be able to say, well, is it air or fire? You're doing both. So see, tr try working with the shell, the sand, earth, um, a cone, incense, or just regular sage, lighting that on fire, and you've got all four elements going for you. Okay, let's see. Everybody's saying hello. Hi guys, I'm so glad you guys are here, it's so awesome. Uh, all right, different people are saying, I'll go ahead and reiterate, some of you may not have heard, I have a healing mesa, and if you specifically want me to add you, a friend, family, loved one, a pet, that may be going through a difficult time or just need some healing energy, please um, in this feed or private message me and I will add you to specifically my healing Mesa. Okay, and just holding that space specifically for you. Okay, all right, I'm not seeing any other questions, so go ahead and feel free. Let me check the time. We have 20 minutes, you guys, so keep asking questions. I'm gonna keep sharing as far as different aspects within shamanism, and then I'll be able to kind of pay attention as far as the feed that's kind of coming through. And um, I'll kind of keep checking what questions that you may have, okay? Okay, somebody said, how and when can you use shamanism today? And I'll kind of reiterate, because some, some of you are still kind of um, coming in. So one of the things in bringing in the earth element, because this is all about as far as connecting to Mother Earth and the four elements of earth, air, fire, water, find a stone, I have a heart stone. I love hearts. I find them everywhere. So I have them everywhere in my house and my healing space. And um, so I have a heart stone. And then I also have another just rock pebble that has believe on it because um, I love words and affirmations as well. So it's a different way of integrating the earth element and feeling grounded and feeling safe. Uh, the fire element is different candles. This one is healing. This one is cleansing. And you can also, if you have just a regular candle at home, write a word or an affirmation of what you feel like you need or a loved one needs, write that on the candle itself. And that way you're kind of working with that activation of the fire to kind of hold that space and have that intention. Okay. Uh, the air element of working with sage and cleansing. I have two different sage feathers and fans that I work with. Um, this one has some bells on it that uh, help kind of disrupt any energy and kind of cleansing. And with the air element, you can do prayer. You can do mantras. You can do breath work. Uh, you can set your affirmations and verbally speak those to the universe. And essentially, you're kind of helping manifest and creating that sacred reciprocity and then looking for those signs around you and uh, kind of listening in in different ways, whether it be through music or um, insights that may come from a friend or just uh, a blessed, like out of nowhere, this owl comes flying in and through and you're like, whoa, it totally gets your attention. So um, within that, I, I now I'm seeing you guys are asking questions, which are awesome. So I wanna make sure I get those answered. Okay, and working with the Mesa outside, what are some intentions you might use? Healing for Earth and Collective. And then Dar Darlis, all I'm seeing is healing our own. And once again, I can't click on the see more, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. But And working with a Mesa outside, um, what's in for it, kind of I'll share different ways that I do that. Um, so I have a couple large walnut trees in my backyard where I'm at now, and I call in that medicine. So I will actually take branches that have fallen off from that tree and uh, kind of get creative and uh, working with the mesa outside. And so these trees out here, they are centuries old. And so they hold a lot of wisdom and knowledge and just medicine in their own right. And so I've also worked at different parks around uh, the city 
and kind of helping create little vortexes of energy so when people pass by they're kind of being gifted some love and and healing medicine as well and so you can gather sticks you can gather unique stones that may be a part of the land um, that's right in your own backyard or even front yard and no differently than like gathering soil and you can get creative you use your creative juices with that and and maybe creating a circle okay and within that circle is where your four elements of earth air fire water I'll take a like a smaller candle and actually place it within the circle itself sometimes I'll sit out by it and light it um, and just be especially at night because it's really pretty being able to kind of sit out under the stars and um, connect with the evening elements and light the fire um, and so if you think about several years ago when we had the water issues with the oil spills getting into the water system it was a beautiful way and many many people transcended to that land and really helping purify the water and it's something that you can truly do like in your own backyard okay and having bowls of water and really setting some clear quartz because clear quartz is all about clarity and cleansing and purifying and you can even do power prayer over it i don't know if you guys have ever heard of dr emoto um he did a study of placing words or affirmations and even not so good words on uh, bottles of water and froze them so he would take anger and fear and love and gratitude and he even took different places where there have been like bombings or not so good uh, energies that took place and put those words on water froze them and took a look at them underneath the microscope and there are YouTube videos specifically on this and so if you think even just one word can create a vibration whether that's good vibration or not so good vibration it's one word that has an intent behind it you have the power and ability to be able to do that that's why I love stones and have like little affirmations on them. Um, and I create these my own just on regular pieces of paper. So that's one way that you can work Darlis and all of you really with the land and with um, different elements that are taking place now or like natural disasters or even like with the COVID, uh, coronavirus that we're going through right now. I mean, you can jot down on a piece of paper and put it underneath a candle um, is really activating a healing nature um, and for them to find a cure so that less and less people are impacted so darlis I hope that I um, answered your question with that uh, Vilma you say could you demo your drumming on this feed I have several drums over there so I would love to um, Katie you're asking do you use Palo Santo at all oh my goodness all the time so I have some Palo Santo sage sprays okay this one i actually make it has some crystals and stones in the bottom and this one um, comes from a vendor that i work with i use it all the time uh, the other thing that i do too is essentially i will use the palo santo wood and light it and have that as incense and sage and i also young living actually has young living essential oils actually has the palo santo essential oil and i carry young living I use it all the time in my healing sessions, all the time. And so it's very medicinal, it's wonderful. So yes, I use it all the time, the wood and the oil itself, and then also in the sage sprays. Okay, let's see. April, I came in a few minutes late, so you may have covered this at the beginning of the workshop. Is a shaman the same as, once again, I can't see? I'm gonna have to figure this out. Um, the, sh the shaman, the shaman is essentially a medicine man or woman and working with the four elements the four directions one thing that will differentiate a shaman in relation to like a re regular doctor is that the shaman never works alone there's no separation of energy with they believe plant medicine is just as live as we are um, animals have just as a valued spirit as we do and the spirit realm, as far as our ancestors and God and those that are transcended on the other side, there no, there's no separation between them and us. It's almost like God is within us, okay? 
And we had that opportunity to be able to be examples of that and choices that we make. Um, but shamans, they never work alone. So like the healing sessions, the soul retrievals and shamanic healings that I do, I never, ever work alone. I always call in and ask for help and guidance and direction. And I pray and ask for the greatest avenue of healing for my clients, for my loved ones, for my community. Never, ever work alone. And so it's one of those things that once again, they believe, I believe there's no separation. We're all one. Okay. Hopefully that uh, answered your question, April. Okay. Uh, Louise, you mentioned calling on ancestors. Please elaborate. Okay. So here we go. So ancestors, they know our innate DNA genealogy. And whether it's, it's uh, centuries back or generations back, you hold some of that DNA and genetic makeup within you. Okay. And within that, there are certain vibrations and energies that are uniquely yours. Nobody else has except for your family lineage and your ancestors. And so a lot of times within the Native American, when they were praying and trying to find what was right for their family or for their community, they would call on their ancestors to bring any wisdom within that spiritual realm because they, a lot of times they will see and experience life a little bit differently and see things from a broader perspective to be able to provide insights of guidance and direction. And so I'll, I'll kind of share a little bit of a personal story and journey uh, with what's happening in my life. And so my mom is still living and she has dementia. And so back in 2015, my dad passed away from cancer. And so what I'm very aware of is that he's still very much around and uh, wanting to help because he was a tremendous helper and really wanted to make sure my mom was okay. And one of the things that he asked of me before he passed is to make sure that my mom is okay. And I'm the primary caretaker for my mom. But what I know is that my dad knows even though he's on the other other side of the veil, he knows things about my mom that I don't, okay? And he also knows ways of being able to help her, especially in the spiritual arena, now that he's in, in heaven, if that's what you wanna call it, um, and has guidance and insights that he really never had in this earthly arena. So I call on him all the time to help me with my mom and whatever ways that I need to show up for her and be present and helping her navigate through um, <clears throat> having dementia and then coming back to a semi like real state and then transcending back into dementia I call on him all the time and then any of my uh, actually my mom's like her sister had dementia um, and so I call on her because she's transcendent, on her mom. So I really call because those people provide a sense of comfort uh, for her that are in ways that I can't. And so I really try to call them forward and be um, kind of surrounding her, loving her, and uh, just providing that safe space for her as she is still within this earthly, earthly realm but uh, to hopefully make that transition as she kind of continues to progress. But that's one of the ways that I personally work with my ancestors. And once again, that kind of ebbs and flows depending on my personal needs. I ask them to help me as far as um, with my stress levels and being the primary caretaker with my mom, uh, different ways, whether it's, um, you know, my dad, he has different ways that he kind of talks with me uniquely. And that's usually I'll find pennies or quarters um, different things like that that'll kind of come through and give me a little God wink and say, you know what, you're not alone. So Louise, I hope I, uh, I hope I elaborated and that's to kind of give you tools of being able to connect in with your loved ones and asking them for help as well. And, um, it's one of the things that I also do if uh, you're having a hard time doing that, I offer intuitive readings or mentoring sessions and kind of helping guide and direct and the shamanism perspective provides that avenue for you to be able to learn how to do that as well in the workshops that I teach. So I hope um, I hope I helped uh, in kind of elaborating on connecting with the ancestors. Okay, let's see. 
You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. Okay. Feel free to ask any, yeah, Louise just said thanks. Feel free to ask any other questions and if I haven't gotten to what I've seen so far in the feed, just let me know. Um, and also know as far as, um, and Vilma, I'm gonna get to the drumming, okay? Uh, before we end, we have like eight more minutes. So the other aspects, I have a retail store, so I sell the, the sage sprays and I sell the essential oils. Um, and I also sell several different crystals and stones. I'll be taking different pictures of what I do have, no differently than the sage. And I have some crystal grid um, pieces that you can purchase. And um, I'll post those on my Illuminating the Soul page to give you the opportunity. I'm also offering half price um, shipping for everyone right now. And um, so that if you want to kind of begin creating like your own and you don't feel like you have what you need, just ask me. And more than likely, I probably have something for you. So I'm going to go grab my drum and I'm going to drum as far as like within that shamanic journey trance state that um, a couple of you had, have asked about, so I'll be right back. Okay. So this was a drum that I actually created um, on my own. It's got a unique design on the back, um, and it's a very sacred drum to me. And so with the shamanic journey work, uh, the beats per second are about four beats per second. And you can find several um, journey videos. Sandra Ingerman is a wonderful asset to be able to kind of, she has tons of books out there, a lot of guided shamanic journeys where she'll take you through specific journey uh, pieces and um, working with your guides, connecting with your guides, your loved ones, healing. Uh, Hank, Mes Hank Wesselman has several books um, out there. And Albert Villoldo, I'll kind of give you some reference points here. Uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, Jose Luis Stevens are some of the um, authors and teachers that I've worked with. And locally, Daniel Moeller is with um, the Pachacuti Mesa tradition. Uh, they hold um, link ups to where you can actually have like a local Kansas City connection. And you don't have to know anything about shamanism. You can just kind of show up. Um, and I know he has a Facebook page as well, because I love to help kind of promote. Other uh, businesses and um, ways of just you connecting and finding what you feel like you need. So um, anyway, I'll do a little bit of drumming. So I've got my Buffalo Hide drum, got my drum beater. So so it's about four beats per second. And essentially what this does is it gets you more into a trance state. When I would journey with Hank, then you increase it. And that shifts the mind, it shifts the body as a reminder and as a call for you to bring you, only you, and all of you back to the present moment. Because the goal is you do not want to have any part of you still hanging out in the ethers and the spiritual realm. You, your goal in this incarnation and lifetime is to be fully, fully present and the here and the now. Otherwise, you're gonna feel fragmented. You're gonna feel like something's off, something's missing. And that's really where shamanic healing can kind of come into play as far as bringing you, all of you and only you, because we go through different traumatic events in our lifetime. And the goal is to be able to feel safe, 
whole and complete. And that truly is something in the shamanic work that I do is to truly provide that space for you. That's so important uh, for your own healing and uh, integration and so that you feel you're not you're not in fear. Not that you don't have fear, but you're not in a constant state of fear and that you feel grounded. So I know we're getting ready to finish up. I have like two minutes left. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome. And um, once again, I'll be posting as far as pictures of my mesas, just to kind of give you some great foundational pieces to kind of go by. I'll be posting my shamanic workshop dates and a little overview of each one. I'll be posting um, several different pictures on my retail items that if you want to purchase, once again, it's half off, it's my gift to you. And I just have so much gratitude and love for the KC metaphysical community. And once again, thank you Sylvie and Juji for this wonderful opportunity. Join me at five today. I'm gonna to be kind of talking about like chakras and how to navigate through each one and once again they all tell a story but that truly is a personal journey as far as you finding your balance and healing and i'll be sharing different crystals and stones and different affirmations easy to do uh into your daily practices as well so i love you guys thank you so much once again this is tammy with illuminating the soul and i'm so grateful for you and this community and uh, I'll see you at five today. So enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the rest of the day, and also the other vendors and workshops at KC Metaphysical, and uh, keep supporting these local businesses. We need you, all right? Ah, we'll see you.